opportunity to present my work on representing Modelica models uh, with an ontology, and for that we created the so-called Mo ont ontology. So I am, am a uh, researcher employed with Fraunhofer in Germany, but also associated to the TU Dresden uh, University. So my uh, presentation will follow a classical structure. At first, I will give you a little bit of motivation why we did it, and then I will uh, describe how we did it and what we did, and in the end, I will uh, show a little example, so uh, yeah, a use case. So um, there are a lot of specialized building simulation tools. Nevertheless, we work with Modelica, with a, which is in general purpose simulation tool. And uh, we do it because our main focus is the HVAC plant of buildings and for uh, simulating these type of systems, a Modelica is well suited. And also the performance of HVAC systems is highly dependent on the control system. So not only on the hardware components, but the control systems are really important. And th this is a domain where Modelica is also very suitable. So uh, when we do it, we do the design with uh, Modelica, then of course we have a no lot of knowledge in these models that might be beneficial to other participants in the design process. And therefore we thought about, well, how can we make this information available to other participants? And uh, we think uh, the digital twin is a, is a good solution. And um, that's why we uh, developed this ontology. Um, a special focus of my work is also to link then this um, simulation model with um, the open BIM format IFC, but today I only have limited time and so I only talk about the left part of this picture. In general, um, simulation models, not only Modelica models, every type of simulation model contain a lot of information that uh, should be um, freed from this data silo. And um, on the next slide, I want to give you a little bit of information why we choose um, Modelica or why Modelica especially is, is suited for that. So di I talked about the digital twin. Well, everybody is talking about the digital twin. For me, the digital twin is a knowledge graph and uh, to be even more specific, it is a knowledge graph page based on the W3C standards, um, RDF, OL and, and so on. So um, at first I need to familiarize you to some Modelica concept since uh, maybe not everyone is uh, familiar with this language. So Modelica is an object-oriented modeling language and I want to describe the main concept using this screenshot from the Modelica environment Daimola. This is a commercial tool but there are also similar tools like Open Modelica available. So a Modelica model usually has a diagram layer. This is like this block, uh, block uh, diagram. And uh, it contains uh, a lot of components. Um, there is a component list usually given uh, in, the, uh, in the tool. And also there is a library list where usually you pick the components from. So these components, they have a graphical representation and usually they have some um, uh, limited number of connectors. These have a certain type and connectors of the same type might be connected to other components. So uh, one special feature that is not so important for um, what I'm presenting today, but it is a very a special feature about Modelica. It is an equation-based language. So it's not algorithm-based, it is equation-based. So this is just to keep it in mind. Um, the, connect, uh, the components usually come from libraries and therefore these libraries also contain uh, information that is necessary to be represented in the knowledge graph. So um, usually the modelers work with this diagram layer, but um, there's not only the diagram layer, there's also one more important layer. Uh, in total there are four, but the text layer is usually that one that contains all of the information and the information in this text layer is very well documented since the Modelica language is open source available. And also there are a lot of libraries available open source and that's why Modelica is especially well suited 
to um, be represented as a knowledge graph. So this would be the text layer of this model. And um, now I come to the part of knowledge engineering. We followed a structured approach. It is given on the left-hand side, and luckily it was described on uh, the keynote presentation in the morning, so I don't have to go into this process. But of course, the first uh, step always is the specification, so defining the requirements. And this was done by uh, formulating competency questions. And as you can see, the first two questions, they aim at the library level. The question three and four, they aim at the instance level of some certain model. And the fifth question is actually beyond the scope of this paper, but it is, of course, in the scope of the, let's say, whole picture. So as I told you, um, Modelica models usually consist of components, and these usually come from some library. And therefore, a library stack can be defined uh, since there is a, a requirements um, chain um, based on a model. So the Modelica standard library is something that is uh, published by the Modelica Association. It's the, the most basic level. And I decided to represent this library stack also with a equivalent stack of knowledge graphs. So uh, the namespace abbreviations are given here on the left-hand side. And as you can see on the knowledge graph side, there are more levels than on the Modelica side. So we need one more level representing the, the language. This is where the MoOnt ontology comes into play. And below that, there are the well-known W3C standards. So the Modelica ontology, the abbreviation is MoOnt, um, defines the vocabulary to represent a Modelica model. It was developed based on a predecessor that has been published in 2014 in the Sprint project, but has not been maintained ever since. It was called Wolfram System Modeler. And so uh, we took this and uh, enhanced it a little bit because it was missing some concepts that we need for the competency questions that I gave in the beginning. And uh, so we enhanced it and we published it. Uh, we registered an identifier for it and generated the documentation. And so this is now available for everyone. In addition to the vocabulary to be able to create a model of the instance layer, it is necessary to get the information from the example model. And also it is necessary to get the information from the libraries. And since these libraries are huge, it is not an option to do it manually, but a tool is necessary for that. This tool has been created. It was named the Motel Transcriptor since it converts a Modelica file that has the ending mo to a um, RDF graph in turtle serialization, which has the ending TTL. Um, luckily, in Modelica, the libraries and the models have the same file format. And so this tool can be used for both the example and the library layer. The tool was implemented in Java. It handles all the upper layers and is also available open source online. So now I want to show you the benefit of uh, the things shown before by querying this example model for the competency question form. So the competency question form might help in the design phase to get a rough cost estimate for the, for the tendering, since the cost of building automation system usually depends on the number of so-called data points. And um, these data points map really good to real inputs and real outputs in Modelica models. So in this model, I highlighted the signal connections with thick blue lines, and I highlighted the um, inpu real inputs and real outputs with red dots. So um, what we see here in general, it is a heat pump plant. The heat pump is in the purple frame. Then we have a source uh, um, um, uh, source part. Then we have the primary heating circuit that heats up this storage. And then we have a secondary circuit where a, a building is served. There's a simplified model 
for the building, heat consumption, and there is a controller uh, which is in the blue box on top. So um, if you count it, we, you would see uh, 15 uh, real inputs and outputs, and so this is what we expect from the query if everything works out fine. So this is the diagram layer of this model. Of course, it also has a text layer which contains all the information. And um, now we took this text representation of the model. The, the pink box, it shows an excerpt from this text representation of the model. And the modal transcriptor was used on this model to represent a knowledge graph that is um, representing the model. And an excerpt from this knowledge graph is given in the lower purple box. So to be able to uh, answer the competency question, it is now necessary to formalize them. We decided to choose Sparkle syntax for that, and I show you the query for the competency question four. The important part here is that the information that, for example, the heat pump, it has a real input, it is not connected to the instance model of this heat pump, but it is an information that is contained in the library. And maybe the, the library component, uh, let's name it uh, the simple heat pump, um, might not have this connector in itself, but it might inherit it from, from some other component. And therefore, we need to have a federated graph of the example model and also of the library levels. And um, we need to have this like middle complex a Sparkle query. So if we use this and query the federated graph, we get a result, which is a list given here. It contains, surprise, surprise, 15 um, uh, results, and these are exactly the ones that we wanted to have. So, but uh, now I have to make an important remark. This is, well, I would not show you if it would not be working, but um, to be able to interpret the result of this query in the sense of the competency question so that we want to have the number of data points, we need to, uh, some requirements on the Modelica side, and these are that all the components on the top level of the model, uh, so we, you saw the screenshot before, they need to have a real counterpart. So uh, might be a storage tank, might be a heat pump, or it might be a controller. But it should not be that there are some connections that are internal uh, signal connections. So every uh, thick blue line that we have seen before needs to be uh, in, uh, in reality a cable. So having said this, I want to summarize um, that uh, all the competency questions uh, could have been answered with the knowledge graphs generated uh, based on MoOnt on the mod model transcriptor. Nevertheless, some have some runtime issues, but it's in general, it is working. And now I want to conclude my presentation by giving a little bit um, the uh, overall picture of the bidirectional translation between Modelica and the Open BIM format IFC. Today I have shown you how a Modelica model can become part of the digital twin. And having done that, it is possible with an alignment to generate an IFC model from that and generate an appropriate IFC step file from this. So this alignment and uh, the respective scripts will be published soon. And uh, for the other way around, so to generate a Modelica model from an IFC file, uh, this is current work and um, it might um, uh, lead to an um, iteration of the Modelica ontology and the alignment as well. So please stay tuned to our next um, presentations and publications and I am looking forward to your questions. No, I did not consider this because I think this information is um